Welcome to the Get Fed podcast, where we bring you the very best of our popular Get Fed series. Join Good Catholics Rachel Schrader Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays to learn about the rich culture, history, and traditions of the Catholic Church, one bite at a time. Today we're going to talk about the priest who blew up his own church. If you scroll through the life story of Father Albert Braun, OFM, you'll wonder how such a life could be real, and not just a storyline from a movie. By the time he died at the age of 93, Father Braun had accomplished more than seems possible in one lifetime. His work spanned the globe, from his ministry among the Masalero Apache in New Mexico to his service as a chaplain in not one but two world wars. Born to German immigrant parents in Los Angeles in 1889, John William, or Bud, Braun was not the most typical candidate for the priesthood. As a child, he was mischievous, short-tempered, and a bit of a prankster. I've been in trouble all my life, he would later laugh. When he turned up at a Franciscan high school preparatory seminary in Santa Barbara, he was accepted, but they told him he was too stubborn to be a priest. Defying expectations once again, he persevered, professed solemn vows in 1912, and was ordained in 1915. He was assigned to the Mesalero Apache in southern New Mexico, a rugged outpost of 720 square miles with a decaying church. Though he shared no common language with the people of the reservation, Father Braun threw himself into the work. He learned all about the Apache people and ranged from one end of the reservation to the other, often on horseback, accompanied by his native interpreter, Eric. The people loved this enthusiastic, hardworking priest, and as numbers swelled in the little chapel, Father Braun set his sights on building a new one. But that would have to wait. With the U.S. joining World War I in 1917, Father Braun volunteered as an army chaplain. He was sent to France, where he served during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, the enormous final battle of the war. He insisted on serving the soldiers in the extreme danger of the front lines, and did so with his characteristic courage, receiving both the Purple Heart and Silver Star. Father Braun then returned to the Mesalero. Inspired by the great churches of Europe, he was determined that they should have a beautiful church too but his request to replace the dilapidated church was denied. You'll never guess what he did next. He filled the cracks in the deteriorating church with a payload of gunpowder, and then, boom. It worked. The building was condemned, and he received permission to build a new one, but was given no money to do it with. The building was condemned, and he received permission to build a new one, but was given no money to do it with. As you probably figured out by now, Father Braun was never deterred by challenges. Insignificant was his common response to any obstacle. With $100 of army pay in his pocket, he hopped on a train to the other side of the country, Philadelphia, to meet with architect William Stanton. Inspired by Father Albert's vision, Mr. Stanton drew up plans for the new chapel pro bono. Then, back on the reservation, Father Albert got to work with a team that included Apache volunteers, a friend from California, and Franciscan friars fleeing the religious persecution in Mexico. Speaking of Mexico, you'll never guess what he did next. With the anti-clerical, anti-Catholic laws in force in Mexico, the priests and faithful were suffering persecution and martyrdom. From New Mexico, Father Braun and another intrepid Franciscan volunteered on three trips to assist their Franciscan brethren across the border. They would disguise themselves as businessmen to buy Franciscan property and save it from confiscation. St. Joseph's Apache mission was at last completed, except for the windows which the community couldn't afford and which would be added later, in 1939 and dedicated on the 4th of July. That year, another world war broke out. At this point, you can probably guess what Father Braun did next. He reported for duty as an army chaplain in the Philippines in November of 1940. He served the soldiers of the New Mexico National Guard during the infamous Battle of Bataan in early 1942 and along with them, was taken prisoner by the Japanese. During the time of his imprisonment, he suffered torture, multiple diseases, and starvation, but none of that stopped him from caring for the sick and dying, burying the dead, and celebrating mass in secret before convincing the Japanese to allow services. He gave up his own rations and craftily stole food for the starving prisoners, becoming so adept at it that he was nicknamed Al Capone. 
He gave the prisoners solace and strength, even when they were loaded onto the infamous hell ships, which the Japanese utilized to ship the prisoners north and prevent their liberation. Three and a half years of imprisonment elapsed before Father Braun and the surviving prisoners were freed in August of 1945. Only a little over half of the New Mexicans who served in Bataan made it home. After the war, Father Braun returned to St. Joseph's and rededicated the church to the veterans of both world wars. For his actions in the war, he received a silver star in the Legion of Merit. But as much as he loved St. Joseph's mission, Father Braun's health, deeply impacted by his years as a POW, required him to take less strenuous posts. His final mission would be to the Golden Gate Barrio, an impoverished Hispanic community in Phoenix, Arizona in 1949. There, despite his injuries, he served his parishioners with vigor, building up a vibrant parish community. Among the projects he spearheaded was a new church, Sacred Heart, which was dedicated in 1956 and still stands today. Father Braun spent the evening of his long life in the care of the Little Sisters of the Poor. Despite the amputation of one leg and confinement to a wheelchair, he kept his indomitable spirit, celebrating Mass for the nuns and other residents up until five days before his death. He passed from this world on March 6, 1983. His body was returned to his beloved Mesalero and buried at St. Joseph's Mission, as he had wished. And this at last is the end of Father Brown's story, quickly summarized. What a saga. What a life lived to the absolute fullest for Christ. Join us next time for another serving of the Get Fed podcast. <laughs>